Hi, welcome back to Cellarat TV with your host, Cellarat Addison Rex. So it takes a lot of water to make wine. In fact, some wineries that can take as much as 25 gallons of water just to make one gallon of wine. I do feel we're really committed to the principle of sustainability. You know, unlike organic, which is pretty well defined by some institutions, uh, sustainability is kind of more up in interpretation. I think that sustainability means um, that when you make a product, you try to have a small environmental footprint as possible. And, it, and you should be able to keep making that product um, perpetually without damaging the land that you're on. So we took this very much to heart when we designed this whole facility. And in fact, we created on the site our own water treatment facility. And it's a three-step process, and we're able to reclaim almost 98% of the water that we use. Uh, we're very much committed to this effort in water conservation. In fact, recently, uh, UC Davis's uh, Water Education Foundation uh, sponsored a little uh, conference called the Towards, Towards Sustainable Groundwater and Agriculture uh, Conference. And it was hosted by us here at the winery. I'll let you see a little clip. And uh, the majority of the water that we uh, produce and deliver comes from the Russian River, which is um, probably about 60 miles to the, to the west here. Uh, Cycle our water from the winery. On the hill above us here is a uh, domestic uh, septic system that handles all of our domestic waste, but all the winery waste, the water from the winery production, goes into a sump at this level and is pumped up to a bioreactor. Uh, very simple device. Uh, there's some pictures of it in the handout there. Uh, it's basically a series of four 10,000 gallon tanks. A series, the water pump from one to the other. Uh, Aerators at the bottom here in Wells, uh, where we monitor the uh, groundwater uh, levels uh, throughout the year. Uh, what, every three, three months or every month? Uh, monitored every month. Uh, we uh, now have a uh, uh, volunteer from the conservation group comes out and does it, but it's, uh, it, it's a very interesting process to watch uh, the levels uh, go up and down. They don't go too deep here. Uh, so as you can see, we're pretty committed to this whole idea of water conservation and responsible use of the resource that is water. Um, in fact, we're actually able to cut our usage down to just four gallons of water for every one gallon of wine that we make here at Deerfield. And in fact, those four gallons of, of water are treated and return to the environment so that they're not contaminated at all. Um, we process the water here at the, the site and we actually are able to reclaim 98% of that water and it's returned to the vineyards for irrigation and goes back into the ecosystem in that way. So I'll show you guys around uh, and show you the steps that it takes uh, to treat water in your own facility. So the first step in this process is collecting all of the water. Everywhere in this facility, including inside the caves actually, there's drains and these drains collect all of the water and all of the floors are graded so that the water runs efficiently into these here drains. And so after we collect all the water, it's funneled into one place called the sump. Yeah, it's not very glamorous, but it's critically important. All of the wastewater in the entire facility gets channeled right here into this sump room, which is basically a giant pit and the solids get separated from the liquids. The solids right here 
They get extruded, carried up by this little conveyor belt into these buckets, which we then take over to our big compost pile in the vineyard, which turns into great organic compost. I mean, it's really good use of it. And uh, the water, which the solids have been separated out from, gets pumped all the way up the hill to our bioreactor facility, which we'll check out next. So here we are at step three of the process. This is our bioreactor, and we're very fortunate today to have- no, I'm the winemaker, that's the bioreactor. <laughs> that's the bioreactor. This is the winemaker who we're lucky to have on the show. He's gonna to explain to us a little bit about how it works and its purpose. Okay, um, the bioreactor bio is what we use to process all of our production wastewater. We collect it in a uh, sump. Did you show them all that stuff? I showed them the sump. Yeah. They saw the sump. They saw the sump. It's pumped up the hill through underground uh, pipes up to this location here. We're up in the forest. We're about, uh, I don't know, uh, 70 feet above uh, the uh, crush pad level. A couple hundred yards. A couple hundred yards. So it's pumped up here. You see there's uh, four uh, big 10,000-gallon uh, uh, plastic tanks. And uh, you think of it in terms kind of like a uh, municipal wastewater system. It uh, does the same thing. Uh, the principle involved is, is uh, uh, the wastewater is put into these tanks and we introduce air and bacteria. Uh, we feed it in the beginning and the bacteria eats all the, uh, the waste from the water. We call it uh, BODs, uh, uh, Biological Oxygen Demand <laughs> Factors, what that means, Bi Biological Oxygen Demand, BODs. In the, in the wastewater system, they just call them BODs. That means all the little the bad things in the water uh, that uh, contaminate the water. And uh, they create an oxygen dem demand, and that's uh, supplied by the growth of the bacteria. So in the bottom of each one of these tanks is a, is a uh, manifold, an aeration ma manifold, a bunch of PVC pipes with holes drilled in them, very simple. And then it's got a big air pump that pumps air through these tanks. Hmm. We've got the pump turned off right now because it's a little bit noisy. Uh, uh, it's uh, running at uh, fairly high speed right now. It's all, all done automatically with uh, rather sophisticated controllers, and we'll go through some of that. Uh, but in a minute, we'll uh, turn it on so we can actually look in and see the, the air bubbling through the uh, liquid. So essentially, I mean, it's just a pump which, which is diffusing oxygen inside the water, and there's bacteria that's that's... Yeah, so what happens, the bacteria grow and they require food and oxygen. Mm -hmm. These are things they grow on, like all living things, mm -hmm. right? You gotta eat, you gotta have air. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, typically what happens, like in a pond, uh, the uh, bacteria or the green growth or the pond scum or the water plants will eat up all the air and then they will die mm -hmm. because they you get oxygen starved. Mm -hmm. Well, if you keep giving them air, they are supplied with the two essential ingredients, the air mm -hmm. and, and the food. Mm -hmm. The food from the water, and uh, from the BODs in the water. So they consume the air and the uh, BODs, and in the process, they clean up the water. So they're eating the bad stuff. And so is this water potable? Uh, well, it could be if we filtered it, although we don't filter it fine enough for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are countries in the world that are actually returning water to potable water like this, so it could be done would take a more sophisticated filtration system. Mm -hmm. uh, we filter it enough that we can use it for irrigation. Okay. Uh, it comes out remarkably clean. It's still a little gray color because it doesn't take color out. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of what the filter would do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could go uh, in the final tank, you could go swimming in it. It wouldn't hurt you a bit. <laughs> Let's uh, do that after the show. It's a little ugly. <laughs> I've never fallen in, although uh, I, I don't think I'd want to. <laughs> 